Tonight, Microsoft Office for iPad is finally here. Facebook's putting lasers in its drones. And YouTube goes down in Turkey. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 53, for Thursday, March 27th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash t-n-2. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Amazon has sent out invites to an event it calls an update on our video business in New York next Wednesday, April 2nd. And sources tell the Wall Street Journal that this is Amazon's long-awaited set-top box unveiling. A device from Amazon would compete with the Apple TV, which has sold 13 million units to date, Roku boxes, which have sold 8 million units, and Google Chromecast sticks that have sold, well, they've sold millions. Google doesn't provide specific numbers. Amazon may also be ready in a free ad-supported streaming television and music service and could launch it in the coming months, sources also tell the Wall Street Journal. The service could include both original series and licensed programs and provide music video streaming for customers searching Amazon for artists or song titles. Less than a week after issuing a nationwide ban on Twitter, today the Turkish government blocked access to YouTube. The ban was ordered hours after leaked recordings of a key security meeting were published via YouTube videos. The ban on Twitter was halted by an administrative court ruling last night, and Turkey's telecommunication directorate has to unblock Twitter in 30 days that's according to Turkish laws. A source tells Reuters that Turkey may lift the YouTube ban if the content in question is removed. Meanwhile, a Turkish court has rejected one of two petitions for lawsuits that were filed by Twitter yesterday, ruling that the company is not a party in the legal wrangling over the government's access ban on Twitter. Today, Facebook unveiled details of its connectivity lab to build drones, satellites, and lasers to deliver the Internet globally. The lab evolved as part of the Internet.org initiative. In a video, company employees explain that multiple satellites need to be in orbit to provide adequate coverage, so Facebook wants to connect them with lasers. The lab is also looking at a new solar-powered form of plane architecture for suburban locations designed to fly for months at a time. The connectivity lab includes experts from Ascenta, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA's Ames Research Center, and the National Optical Astronomy Observatory. On Tuesday, a blog post published by a researcher from antivirus provider Trend Micro explained how two apps, Songs and Prized, that were downloaded from the official Google Play market more than one million times that use Android devices to mine the Litecoin and Dogecoin cryptocurrencies without informing end users. That's the key. Mining apps typically consume more than average amounts of electricity and can generate very hot temperatures with CPUs or GPUs or other types of processors to perform cryptographic hashing functions required for users to mint new coins. This morning, Prize was no longer available in the Google Play Store, though Songs was still live. Google representatives tell, tell Ars Technica that apps that engage in distributed computing behavior must include upfront disclosure that establishes user knowledge and obtains explicit consent. Coming up, what kind of music goes with a good old thunderstorm? A new service wants to tell you. And joining us next is Bloomberg's Edmund Lee to tell us more about Microsoft's new iPad offering. But first, let's take a moment to thank lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from experts in a variety of industries. With a subscription, you'll get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses, covering a wide range of technical skills, creative of techniques and business strategies. If you'd like to improve your photography or master new software or boost your web design skills or even learn programming at lynda.com, you'll find those videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, even your mobile device. The instructors are all professionals, they're experts, they're passionate about teaching, and each course is structured so you can jump around 
or go from very beginning to very end. It's $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which includes exercise files. Try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash tn2 and access the entire library. Over 2,000 courses free for seven days. That's lynda.com slash tn2. Joining us now is Edmund Lee, media and tech reporter at Bloomberg. Hello, Edmund. Hey. How you doing? Doing well. So what do you think about that old Microsoft Office finally coming to iPad? Have you taken that it for a spin? Finally, finally. Yeah. Um, yes, I actually have. I got a quick look at it. Uh, it looks like it's a pretty well-designed product. I think the, you know, it, the, the, the main thing is, is that all the things for regular office users, um, the functions that you're used to using, the features, it's more or less all there. And I think it, it you know, it, it sort of falls into the regular vocabulary of MS Office. So in that way, it's great. And I think there are a lot of, you know, offices uh, where they hand out iPads to their staff and, you know, toggling back and forth between their desktop and their iPad if they've got Excel file or Word, Microsoft Word file, uh, it's that much more seamless now. So... Uh, I think it would certainly be some kind of benefit for Microsoft. Uh, it is it does signal sort of a a big philosophical shift on their part in terms of you know working with Apple, which is you know one of their big rivals. Yeah, so uh, there are, there's a sticking point for a lot of users that you know the app is free. You can view documents, you can copy and paste between documents, you can share, you can present using PowerPoint. But if you want to edit or create anything from scratch, you'll need an Office 365 subscription, which I think at the very cheapest is still about $7 a month. Do you think that's... Not cheap. You're right. And do you think that's... Is this just aimed at business users? Does Microsoft feel that the the, the, the quality of the apps are worth it to compete with something like Google Docs or, or Apple's iWork? Well, so that's the thing. I, I think they're hoping, they're banking on, you know, the enterprise level sort of customer. And so that doesn't mean necessarily the regular consumer like you and me, but the offices that have a few hundred people, a few thousand people, tens of thousands of people uh, uh, using Microsoft Office, they want to make sure that they can sort of hold on to those people because more and more sort of uh, digital work is becoming sort of cloud-based, right? And so Google Docs is a great example of that. It's free, so uh, it's hard to beat. And um, I think that's where Microsoft is hoping that they can claw back or make sure that they don't lose too many of the, the enterprise class customers to whether it's Google or who knows what else comes down the line. Uh, the jury's out whether it's going to be successful, certainly, but I think that is the that's the aim here. That's the purpose of doing this. So a lot of folks said, well, if you offer a subscription, then you get around that whole 30% cut that goes to Apple if you charge for, let's say, uh, Microsoft Word in the App Store. But Apple confirmed to Recode that Microsoft right. is offering Office 365 subscriptions within Office apps, and they are paying that 30% cut. Does it surprise you that the companies are playing nice? Um, you know what? So this is the first uh, big initiative with, under the new CEO, uh, and I think, you know, that it's it signals it it shows us it gives us a sense of how he operates, and I think that's the important thing here, which is, you know, if he's willing to forego thirty percent, that's still a, a decent chunk, but he's probably doing the math on that, which is well, fine, I'll lose thirty percent, but I'll gain, you know, that many more customers, I'll gain that many more. Uh, users or subscribers through this. So uh, I'm willing to do this. I think, you know, we all have to play in the ecosystem, right? I, I think the way that uh, digital media, digital hard hardware in general has worked is that people don't rely on any one company for everything. And I think the more that Microsoft realizes they have to participate in this ecosystem and not shut themselves out by trying to create their own end-to-end -end system, the better off they'll be probably. Right, and, and for businesses who are just absolutely have, have been using Microsoft for years, it's probably not too deep of a pocket to dig into uh, to right. be able to, to keep uh, employees happy that want to be using an iPad, say. Right. You they mentioned the new it. CEO. This was Satya Nadella's kind of big, big, uh, big showcase right. as, as top dog. How do you think he did? How do you think he, he, he went over to, to everyone who's watching very closely to see how he's going to change the company? I mean, I think he did a fair job of, you know, articulating what, what at least right now the immediate vision for the company, but it was still unclear as to the, you know, the, the bigger vision. Like, what kind of company is Microsoft? Is it simply a software company or, you know, is it an enterprise service company? Is it to a consumer company? Are they going to do hardware? Xbox is still a big part of their business. 
Uh, and, you know, the top of your, your uh, uh, the, the segment here, you talked about Amazon TV and their, what they're coming out with. Microsoft Xbox is a great example of something that, uh, of where they could be offering more television uh, or, or entertainment services. That's still something that they're on the fence on. And I think that's what we're still waiting to see is for him to define what kind of company Microsoft is. Is it software? Is it entertainment? Is it hardware? or something else. We don't know. And I think we're still waiting to, to, to get a sense of what that is. Edmund Lee, the uh, media and tech reporter over at Bloomberg. Are you going to be going to that Amazon event in New York next week, by the way? Um, yes, I'll probably, you know, be part of the hordes of media people <laughs> <laughs> going. Well, uh, the right. Good. I'm glad. I'm going to read. I'm going to read your story first. Uh, thanks so much <laughs> okay, for being on tech <laughs> news tonight. Right. Tell folks where they can keep up with your work. Oh, you can just check me out on Bloomberg.com or you can follow me on Twitter at Edmund Lee. Excellent. Thanks so much for being here. Sure. Anytime. Well, finally, music streaming service Songza has taken sort of a page out of Beats Music Mad Libs feature and teamed up with the Weather Channel to deliver songs tailored to a user's mood or activity. So an example would be music for a sunny stroll or stargazing on a clear night or relaxing and soothing songs during a thunderstorm. With this partnership, Songza says... It hopes to better understand how weather elements such as precipitation or temperature drive subconscious changes to people's routines. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news show, Tech News Today, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Also tomorrow, BlackBerry has its latest earnings report, plus two stock market IPOs, Everyday Health and Aerohive Networks. I'm Sarah Lane. Good day. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.